story of Shakyamuni is known and told and loved over half the world. Of the many stupas built in his memory, Sanchi is architecturally the noblest and the best preserved. Located near Bhopal in Madhya Pradesh, it is a solid structure, not easily inclined to perish. It takes us back more than 2,500 years. It was then that the light of compassion was kindled, the light of peace, some day to encompass all the world. It was Ashoka who, using the majesty of the lion as a symbol of righteousness, devoted himself to Buddhism and built the Sanchi stupa. Sanchi was near the ancient Vidisha, a city of towers and gateways, famous for its artists, painters and workers in wood and ivory. It was they who began to enlarge and enrich the bear stupa built by Ashoka a hundred years before. They believed the word of peace would spread in all directions, for they built four gates. North, South, East and West. So that people, be they pilgrims or disbelievers, might come to Sanchi from anywhere and find entrance there. They decided that the life of the Buddha be depicted without ever showing his face or figure. For to them, he was visible only in dharma, in his teachings, not in his person. For this purpose, they adopted three devices or symbols. The wheel, which encompasses the master's sermon. The bodhi tree, symbolizing Gautama's enlightenment. And the stupa itself represents the Mahaparinirvana, the final passing away, the ceasing to be. The south gate is the oldest, and it was built and carved in the first century BC. This scene depicts the worship of the Bodhisattva's locks, and the inscription tells us that the south gate was the work of the ivory carvers of Vidisha. Here is a vivid picture of Ashoka's distress on seeing the withering of the Bodhi tree. This, incidentally, is believed to be the only sculpture of Ashoka we have in India. After the Buddha attained Nirvana, people came from many lands to Kushinagara and asked for a share of the mortal remains of the Lord, so that they might enshrine them in stupas. But the Mallas were obstinate, and this led to what is known as the War of the Relics. As we turn our eyes, we get a glimpse of the dome and see the upper and lower balustrades curving towards the top of the stupa. We now come to the east gate, which like all the others, is composed of two square pillars surmounted by the elephant capital and supported by exquisite yakshi figures. Here we see depicted the six inferior heavens, in which the passions still remain unsubdued. This panel shows the temple of Bodhgaya and preludes the many stories that are told about the Buddha. One of them being the miracle of walking on the water. The river Niranjara is in flood and Kashyapa hurries in a boat to rescue the master only to find that it isn't necessary. Many kings and eminent men came to do homage, and this panel shows Bimbisar with his royal cortege coming to visit the Buddha. Ashoka's visit to the Bodhgaya temple. It was this great king who, 300 years after the War of the Relics, 
unearthed them from their resting places and further divided them, causing 84,000 stupas to be built throughout India. The Great Renunciation under an umbrella, the young prince, going away from all that was dear to him. His progress is shown by repeating the symbol of the umbrella and the horse at four different places. Not only men, the animals of the wild woodland worshipped him too. For did he not say, all life is one. The unity of life that Gautama preached is of the essence of his compassion, for he loved all animals, even as little children do. The North Gate is the best preserved of the four, and so explains better the transition that had taken place in Indian art, since the stupa was first built by Ashoka. Naturalism and form came to Sanchi long after Ashoka was dead. And the sculpture we see in Sanchi today appeared when the primitive memory picture had been replaced by a more developed sculpture. The figures are portrayed in free and easy postures. They are composed to give depth and perspective. They are closer to their counterparts in nature. For the first time in Indian art, Sculptors began to experiment in different techniques to test their own ability, their versatility. Their sculpture was part of a narrative, the story of Buddhism, and they told it expressively and simply. This panel on the right pillar of the North Gate depicts the ascent of the Buddha to heaven to reveal the law to his mother. Now we see the Buddha delivering a sermon to his father, King Shuddhodana, and the Shakya princes. Here is a scene depicting the temptation of the Buddha. Mara with all his might of evil, Mara and all his sons, skilled in the art of temptation, failed to shake the young Siddhartha. And it was only when he had overcome them that he became the great teacher. Many other stories told of the Buddha's past lives. In a previous life, he was Vaisantara, a kind prince, who when asked for the miraculous elephant which brought rain to his dry country, gave it away. This made his father, the king, very angry, and he banished Vaisantara. It was the god Indra, they say, who in the guise of a Brahmin, kept asking him to make sacrifices to find out how selfless he really was. On the way, the Brahmin asked Vaisantara for his chariot, and he gave it away. Then he and his wife settled at a hermitage. Here he was happy with his children. But in the hermitage, the old Brahmin asked him for his children, for he had none of his own, and he gave them away too. It was only when Vaisantara gave up his wife that Indra at last relented and reunited them in happiness. We now come to the last of the four gates, the West Gate, supported by the Dwarf Capital. The Dwarfs represent the different moods in which man goes through his earthly existence. The rear face of the lowest architrave shows the first sermon at the deer park in Sarnath. Although the Buddha had lived 400 years before, the sculptors told his story in the dress and costumes of the time in which they lived. Although the style of wearing clothes could not have altered much, the elaborate costumes worn by gods, evil spirits and men tell us something of the life of the time of Ashoka and a century later.
Living as we do in the quick tempo of the 20th century, a tempo not easy to escape, a visit to a place like Sanchi does give us a pause by the wayside. There is really so much beauty in our old monuments. Stupa is round, perhaps because truth faces in all directions. It is round perhaps because the vault of heaven is round, or the world, or the sun, or the moon, we do not know. What we do know is that the stupa is an act of faith, a work of art, built in the belief of the Buddha's message of peace. A simple belief, a trust, integrated, eternal.